Hello everybody. Welcome home. Welcome to church. We call this home home because this is place where we come together as a family to worship God. So, for those who are outside enjoying your coffee, I would encourage you just just come in, but uh, if you bring your coffee in, make sure you have your cover and uh, we're going to worship our God together and uh, as we sit down and uh, relax, uh, Let's all get settled in first. Yes, yes. All come. Yes, those who are at the door can just come in. And we're going to worship our God together. For those who are at home, welcome too. I know some of you are comfortably seated down at your couch. Don't lie down. Sit up straight. And when we all stand together, uh, we hope that all of you will also stand up and worship our God together. Next week is what day? Next week is what day? Next week is Monday, lah, is it? Sunday. Okay, next Sunday is Chinese New Year. Gong Si Fa Chai. Sing Nen Kuai La Wan Si Rui. Wow, I don't know. Some of you are all la banana, okay? But uh, Happy New Year. So next week, if you are coming to church, make sure you wear the Chinese uh, Chinese kebaya, is it? Or oh, Chinese xiong sam, very good. And then the guys can wear all the what? You, what do you call that? The Chinese way? Samfu ah. Okay, samfu ah. Okay, good. So uh, let's uh, come together and uh, let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, as we come together. In your presence, we give you glory for when your saints gather together as a family, Lord. There you are in our midst. We thank you, O Lord, whenever there are two or three and, and whenever the family come together, Lord, we want to give you glory. For you are worthy of all. And we are reminded, O Lord, that no matter what happens, even as we enter into the new year, when the righteous cry out to you for help. The Lord hears and delivers us from all our troubles. And the Lord is near to who? To the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for your promise. As we come together, we want to arise together and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we all arise together as we praise our God? Good morning, church. Happy early Chinese New Year. I see everyone in their pretty chong sums. Let's all rise as we worship our Lord together. The mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, you're good.
promise keep you down. So let's remind our hearts that you are never going to let me down. Because you are God. today, uh, which is Isaiah 43, 18 to 21, it says, do, rem- do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully, I am about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, jackals and ostriches, because I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people my chosen, the people whom I form for myself will make known my praise. In this verse, it says God makes a river in the wilderness. He makes a new thing. And it's a new year. Thank God for 2023. And you know, God is a promise-keeping God in case we have forgotten. You know, one of the things that I have pondered as I I was thinking about what it means to keep promises is that I'm very bad at it. (laughs) As a human, I miss deadlines, I miss my word, but you know, God is someone who keeps His promise every single time. And when we cannot trust ourselves, we can trust on a God who actually comes through on His word, who actually walked the cross for our salvation and paid the price for us. And therefore we can trust that He keeps every single promise and every single miracle He has for you. I sense that for some of us, we need to be encouraged by this. If you could just put your hand on your heart and say, He is a promise-keeping God. Amen. And He will keep the promises He has said to me. Whether He is a healer, a provider, a savior, Let's take a moment to tell our heart that 
that God is my provider, my healer, whatever it is.
never stopped, you've never stopped working. You've never stopped, you've never stopped working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You've never stopped, you've never stopped working. So see it till we believe it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. When I don't feel it, you're working You've never stopped, you never stop working You never so stop, he loves you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working And even when I don't see it, you're working
Purify our hearts, and even as we sing this song as a thanksgiving offering unto the Lord, and allow Him to speak to us. What does it mean to be purified? The heart being purified, because when the heart is purified, it goes through refiner's fire. Oh. Isn't that painful? Lord, we want our hearts to be purified. Let's sing it together. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold. Oh Lord, let this be my prayer. continue to play I want all of us to just focus on God remember the day when Jesus was hung on the cross bring your thoughts back to that 2,000 years ago and when Jesus was up at Golgotha on Calvary there were two thieves beside him And Jesus was in the middle. And one of the thieves says, If you are God, why don't you come and help us? Why don't you come and help me? Come down and help me. If you are God. But the others asked Jesus, Remember me. Remember me. A heart that is repentant. Sometimes we go to refiner's fire and we don't even understand why. But the Word of God reminds us when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them from all their troubles. 
But the Lord, Lord's word is very clear. He says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Which means to say, there will be people whose hearts will be broken. There will be people whose lives will be crushed in spirit. But you say, God, help me. I do not want to be in that situation. For every one of us that goes through refiner's fire, there will be a breaking down. And the Lord says, He is near to the brokenhearted. Lord, I thank you that you have never deserted us. We do not understand why there are brokenness. But one thing we know, O Lord, you have reminded us that you are near with us. Not only are you near with us, our thoughts are, goes back to the cross. Not only are you near with us, you are with us. Because you took that brokenness on the cross yourself. And you died. You were broken for us. You know, God, forgive us when we forget that moment that we think that our brokenness is your fault. How could you allow brokenness and me to be crushed in spirit? And forgot that, that you have done it for me on the cross. But today you have reminded us through this refiner's fire that you are with us, you are near us, and no matter what it is, O oh Lord, you have allowed that brokenness so that I can be refined. And I thank you, Lord, because you didn't just sit in heaven's place and just allow us to go through it. You came, you died on the cross for us. And for that, we are thankful and grateful. And as we stand together and partake of this bread, we want to give thanks for what He has done for us. And at the same time, we also remember the cup. And we're going to partake of it together. With thanksgiving in our hearts, the bread and the wine together. And we may partake of this bread and the wine. Remember what Jesus has done. He has paid the price for you and me. He didn't just allow us to go through difficulties. But He said, I have gone before you. And for that I say, thank you. Let's partake of the bread together right now. And thank God for His blood that has washed us clean. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. As we continue in this act of worship to, before our Lord and before our God, even all those at home, as you partake of the bread and the wine, giving is another act of worship, sowing to the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything. We want to bless this offering and give it unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Yes, I know some of you have stand a while. That was the uh, refiner's fire for you. <laughs> okay. Okay, I want to welcome all of you. Yes, I see some new faces. I see some visitors. We want to welcome you. I see Jamie there. That's Jamie, is that right? Yeah, and the husband from Finland. Yes, let's uh, welcome one another. Those who are new, can you just raise your hands? Yes, we want to welcome you. Say hello to them and uh, welcome them and say, Gong Hi Va Choi. Come, just welcome one another. Come on, let's go around. Greet one another.
Okay, it's so good to see all of you alive, okay, and welcoming one another. This is the house of the Lord, and we want to welcome all of you. Afterwards, when the service is over, don't just chow, okay, don't just chow. Please buy me lunch. Oh, oh no, 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 don't have to buy me lunch, huh? but please take a cup of coffee, homebrew coffee. So, um, uh, we want to get to know you more. And especially those who are visiting us and those who are new here, uh, take two cups, okay? <laughs> okay, the others can take three cups. <laughs> okay, thank you for coming. And today we're going to have our very own elder, Elder Folk Ming. You... Elder Folk Ming, yes, Elder Folk Ming. Yeah, come on, Elder Folk Ming. Yes, Elder Folk Ming is going to talk about what? Beauty. Is there beauty in brokenness? Anyone wants it? Nobody wants it. But just now we read about the verse, isn't it? That even uh, if we don't go through this, how can we grow in maturity? Yeah. So we're going to bless our brother here as he speaks to us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our elder here. We thank you, O Lord, that you have called him. Ask that whatever he speaks, O Lord, you will just use it to be an encouragement not to us. So we don't understand why there's so much brokenness. But, oh God, we know that whenever you say something, you know what is brokenness. And we thank you that today there's assurance, there's beauty in brokenness. Bless our hearts as we allow you, O oh Lord, to soak inside and teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to SSGC. Uh, the topic that I'm going to share this morning is Beauty in brokenness. And the scriptures is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 12, and Psalm 147, uh, verse 3. At the first glance, this term, beauty in brokenness, seems to be, doesn't make sense, isn't it? Yeah? I mean, how can it be beauty in brokenness? But in Christianity, in Jesus, indeed, there are beauties in brokenness. Let us turn to this uh, scripture passage and read that through because it's the word of God. But we have this treasure in jars or clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Verse 8. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Verse 11, For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that His life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in us. You. Someone for seven verse three says, He heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. I checked the definition in Cambridge Dictionary. What's the meaning of brokenness? Right, brokenness being defined in the dictionary as a condition in which something is badly damaged and unable to continue or work correctly. Like for example, this a picture there, the 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 the, uh, uh, the, the jar, you know, once it's broken, then you can't use it to, co to, to keep things, for example, water. The other definitions are a state of strong emotional pain that stops someone from living a normal or healthy life. Brokenness often happens when all our false trust and confidence in self are taken away. And we are left with nothing, with no hope in our flesh. And usually broken things are considered worthless. We can't use things that's broken. But God can make broken things into new things. God can remake it into something better, something that He can use it for His glory. And we have seen many examples of that in the Bible, that God 
change people, change broken people, remake it, and God use it as an instrument for God, for His glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we look into your words, Lord, we want to pray you will speak to us, you will give us your insight. We pray for your spirit to touch us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The verses that we have read, uh, especially the one in 2 Corinthians, what is the context and background of the book of Corinthians when it was written? The Apostle Paul wrote 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians because the people there were influenced by the pagan culture. You see, the Christians in Corinth supposed to influence the community, but the other way around, you know, the pagan culture actually influencing the Christians down there. So that prompted Paul to root uh, 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. But however, Paul did not write out of hatred towards the people that, hey, you are not obedient, doesn't follow what I say. Uh, he wrote that out of conviction to, to, to ask them to stay fast, out of love, and to tell them that God cares them. All right, stay fast. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul begins talking about the light of the gospel. That is, if you read through uh, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 to 6, that is what Paul trying to explain. He explained that as Christians, we are to proclaim the light. The light, that means the light being Jesus. Uh, in Jesus, we see and know the glory of God. And uh, we are to proclaim uh, Jesus because in this broken world, people need the Lord. I kind of uh, uh, divided these uh, uh, verses 7 to 12 into three uh, key divisions or key message. First one is a, a, a power of the gospel, that's verse 7. The other one, uh, the second one is brokenness, uh, verses 8 to 9. And then reasons and reality of brokenness, verses 10 to 12. We're going to look into each of that division. Uh, separately and try to uh, learn from the Word of God. The first one, power of the gospel. Verse 7 says, that, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. What is this treasure? First question. What is this treasure? Anyone like to try Richie promised you two cups of coffee. I promise you four cups of coffee. Double. <laughs> okay, John MacArthur explained. I, I think he, he put it in a very nice way. Yeah, John MacArthur explained. The treasure in view here is the same as the word ministry found in chapter 4, verse 1. Both terms describe the glorious gospel message that the eternal God came into the world in the person of Jesus Christ and died on the cross and rose again to provide forgiveness of sin and eternal life for all who would repent and believe. The treasure is of immeasurable worth because in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Right, a very beautiful uh, uh, description of, of that treasure by John MacArthur. We see this treasure in verse 6 also. It is written in such a way that the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That is how it's been defined in chapter 4, verse 6, the, the, the word treasure. Jesus taught a parable regarding this gospel treasure in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. All right. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44 says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. The treasure described there is worth more than anything in the world. The treasure of salvation is through Christ alone, by grace alone, through faith alone. Second question, who has this treasure? 
This one, this, this one is like objective question. Right? The answer is found there. Who has this treasure? Anyone? Free coffee for you. All of us, we have. The word says that we have this treasure, isn't it? Verse 7. Yeah? Verse 7 says that we have this treasure. Paul says that we have. We have this treasure. Paul wants the church in Corinth to understand the fact that they have been given this gospel light since they have seen the glory of God in Jesus Christ. They have something more precious than gold, more precious than silver or from any fine jewels. This knowledge of Christ has provided them with a treasure that is only given to them by the grace, by the mercy and the steadfast love of God. Verse 7 says this treasure is in jar of clay, right? We have this treasure in jars of clay. Jar clays were the common vessels for carrying water and other things during Paul's time. You know, this is clay jars, yeah? It is, it, it, it is a means to put water, to keep water. So clay is a very common substance and easily available anywhere during Paul's time. And it is a very commonly available raw material or rather cheap raw material also. Uh, some clays are beautifully decorated, you know, and some clays are made very plain, you know. Uh, I, I call that humble vessels. But whether plain or beautiful, they had a life-giving function, these this physical uh, 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 clay jars. Uh, they, people use it to gather, gathering for gathering uh, water, for preserving it, and, and also for transporting water. Uh, for people, you know, to, to drink, to drink the water. In, in one sense, clay jar are a worthy metaphor for the role of the Christian in gathering, preserving, and transporting the spiritual water to the gos of the gospel to dry souls. But clay jar are easily broken, isn't it? So drawing the parallel, Paul was trying to imply that Christian can be easily broken and crushed if we take away our focus from Jesus. Uh, having said that, this doesn't mean that you know, the, the gospel that we carry right, inside this jar is not powerful. Yeah? There is power in the gospel. And in fact, in, in, in the word 7, it says that, you know, uh, 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 we, we are easily broken because it is one of the means to show the all-surpassing power of God through us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5 says, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. And 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verse 4 says, for he was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in Him, but in dealing with you, we will live with Him by the power of God. God's, God's power is displayed through our weaknesses and brokenness. It is also to make sure that His people not only believe in who God is, but it is also to increase their trust in what God is doing through us. God wants to work through us and to display His glory. He wants to exhibit to the world. God wants to show to the world the greatness of His power, the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ through us. But in order for that power, for that power to be displayed, for that gospel to be fully displaced in us, we must first be broken first. We must first be broken of ourselves. Now, let's look at the second division. Uh, the first one, we look at the power of the gospel. The second division is uh, brokenness. After Paul explains the power of the gospel as the hope for those who have been given the treasure of knowing Christ, he then points them to something that a true Christian will face. 
one of the familiar words probably to some of you, John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus reminds us that in this world, you will have trouble. So Christians will experience hardship and brokenness. However, there is beauty in brokenness. Let me read to you John 16, verse 33. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Um, in these two verses, uh, uh, 8 and 9, uh, Paul lays out a fourfold description of brokenness. Uh, it says that hard press on every side, but not crushed. That's one description. Perplexed, but not despair. Second description. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Uh, third, and struck down, but not destroyed. So there are four descriptions of brokenness, and we're going to go through that one by one. Yeah. I kind of look up uh, different Bible versions because we're reading the English translation. So I, I, I look at the different version. Uh, uh, of what is the um, uh, word being translated in different versions. Uh, like the word hard press that's used in NIV, perplexed is used in NIV, persecuted and struck down. Uh, take for example, hard press. ESV is being translated as afflicted. Uh, King James Version, New King James Version being translated also as hard press. Yeah? So probably you can look at it. Uh, okay. Uh, might be a bit challenging to read, right? So sorry for that. But anyway, I mean, probably you can read through during the uh, uh, CG discussion. I prepared some discussion questions that need to refer to this. Uh, you can, you, you, you can. I, I kind of, what I did is that I look at the dictionary. The dictionary I look at is Oxford at once learner. And then I look at the original Greek word. What is that meaning? So that is kind of drawing some parallel over that, okay? If you can't read it, doesn't matter. We'll, we'll, we'll go through that one by one. First one, hard press but not crush. The word translated hard press or affliction refers to being under pressure. Christians and non-Christians alike, on a daily basis, we are subjected to pressure. Is there anyone sitting here can claim that you don't have pressure in life? Anyone? All claims that you don't have pressure in life, put down your hand. <laughs> okay, some of you are listening, some of you, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's true. I mean, every day we face with pressure, yeah, you know, even like sometimes your, your car break down or your bicycle broke or things like that, you know, and, and especially sometimes bad news comes to the family that so and so are not feeling well, so and so, you know, yeah. So, so every day we hear you know, we, we, we are under constant pressure. There's pressure coming from every side, you know. Paul knew this uh, 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 pressure, you know, uh, uh, very well and very familiar. And in fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 to 9, that's how he described it. He says that, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experience in the province of Asia. We will under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despise of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. Such a strong description of the kind of pressure that Paul experienced. But yet, yet he wasn't crushed. Through it all, he had hope in God who raises the dead. Second Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 1 verses 9 to 10 says, But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us again. On Him we have set our hope that we will continue to deliver us. He will continue to deliver us. Paul was able to stand strong in the midst of pressure, not because of his own strength, 
but because of the surpassing power of God. Although he was weak, Paul was weak, but God was strong. God has given him this gospel uh, uh, ministries to press on. Paul recognized that it is it was a great privilege for him, you know, to, to carry this gospel message to the people that God want him to uh, uh, reach out. And Paul acknowledged that it is a press, this treasure inside him that he's supposed to share. It's a precious, it's a very precious thing that he needs to deliver to people and he hold on to the promise of God that though he is under pressure but he will not be crushed he knew God's power is sustaining him as he served the Lord brothers and sisters take heart that there will be pressure there will be pressure in our lives in around us but the power of God will help us so that we will not be crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Imagine Paul. Paul being a theologian, apostle, missionary, great, you know, uh, a church planter, well, perplexed. He was at a loss of what was going on around him when he moved around, you know. Uh, people rejected the gospel. It's such a wonderful gospel, but yet people reject. False teaching, right? Persecution. Paul understands the depravity of man. He understands the, you know, uh, 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 the, the doctrine. He understands atonement, uh, irresistible grace, and, and so forth and so forth. But there were times even, even he wondered at the ways and wisdom of God. Kind of very familiar, yeah? Sounds familiar to us also. At times, we wonder the ways and wisdom of God. So even Paul, at times, he wondered that. But however, he's perplexed. The way that he, you know, he, he finds very perplexed on, on all this does not drive him to despair. He was at a loss. Paul was at a loss, but not a complete loss. He was stressed, but not stressed out. He didn't let being perplexed drive him to despair. He had full confidence and hope in the surpassing power of God during trials and trouble. Brothers and sisters and friends, how about us? Do we lose hope and give up when we are hard-pressed and perplexed as we serve? as we serve SSGC with hearts open and hands up, as we try to drive SSGC to the next level uh, to serve the community through Christ, do we give up? Something to think about, something to pray. Next, persecuted but not abandoned. The word translated persecuted has the connotation of being pursued or hunted. Paul certainly knew what it was like to be persecuted. He was often beaten and imprisoned. Not only that, but Paul's enemy also persecuted him by spreading lies about him. They pursued him, they chased after him, and they wanted to put him to death. But in all that, he knew God never abandoned him. He was never alone. Paul never doubted the presence of God. Paul never doubted the security of God. He was fully trusting God's faithfulness. Paul knew God will not abandon him simply because God is in control in every moment of his life. God is in control in every situation. The Spirit sustains Paul's life when he was under persecution. The fourth one, struck down but not destroyed. Paul says he was hard-pressed. Remember the first one? He was saying he was hard-pressed, he was perplexed, persecuted, and struck down, but not destroyed. 
He was down, but not out. He was fully convinced that his enemy could take his life, but God will raise him. God's power is displaced as a God's power is displaced as we exercise endurance during adversity. Paul wrote in first uh, in Philippians, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What does that word mean? What it means is that Paul will continue to serve the Lord in the midst of persecution and affliction, whether he fully understands what is happening around him or not, or even, or even if it costs his life. Yes, Christians will experience hardship and brokenness. However, there is beauty in the brokenness. This fourfold description that I've shared work together to make this point. Paul's suffering was intense and significant, but God was always faithful. In Paul's weakness, God showed his strength and his power. There is a power within, within us that will try to push the power or, or, or the pressure from external so that we will not be crushed, we will not be despair, we will not be abandoned and we will not be destroyed. And that is the kind of Christian life we are living. The kind of Christian life I, I, I term it as a victorious experience Christian life. Allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us together in fighting that external pressure. Why would Paul have been so committed to carrying on this gospel ministry? Well, this brings us to the final division. I mentioned there are three divisions in these uh, few verses, uh, to verses 10 and 12. Why would Paul be so committed to ca carrying on this gospel ministry? The answer is found in verse 10. Verse 10 says what? We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Um, Paul reiterated the intent of verse 10 in a different perspective in verse 11. Verse 11 says, For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. And the reality of Christian life is found in verse 12. That's the reality. Death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 says, Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regards to Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, which is the church. Death is always at work in disciples of Christ so that life can be at work in followers of Christ. Brothers and sisters, you know, it sounds a little bit depressing to, you know, that, yeah, we, that there will be affliction, there will be brokenness. Kind of sounded a little bit depressing, right? Uh, but take heart, as what we have read in Psalm 147, verse 3. Psalm 147, verse 3 says that He, that means the Lord, heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. In conclusion, as our broken world breaks us, yeah, all the pressure as the broken world breaks us, God's eternal life leaks out through those broken cracks in us. That's what I shown in the picture there. You know, the, the, the cracks, that's where it shines out God's eternal life. As a broken world breaks us, God's eternal life leaks out through those broken cracks in us. In this way, God displays eternal life and heavenly power. The more struggles presses in on us, the more opportunity there is for God's treasure to spill out 
on a spiritually impoverished world. That's how God uses us as a broken vessels. So brothers and sisters and friends, in our brokenness, God's beauty is displayed. The glory of Jesus Christ is displayed more clearly in and through our brokenness. This is part of God's eternal plan to show off the eternal value of the gospel. Jesus uh, warned us and also assured us yeah, uh, in John 16.33, just now I read. Jesus warned us that in this world you will have trouble. But he also assured us, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Pause in Acts 14, verse 22, encourage us to, be, uh, to remain true to the faith. To remain true to the faith. Uh, one commentator kind of sums up very nicely what I'm trying to say. And uh, uh, this commentator, his name is Walter Atwell. This is what he wrote. Affliction is characteristics of life in a spoiled creation. But it is a means of discipline that can lead to obedience to God. The afflictions experienced by Christians will result in God's richest blessing forever and ever. There is beauty in brokenness. Hence, be kind to yourself and to others. Yeah? Uh, next week, as what Richie says, and as what you all know, it will be Chinese New Year. So many of you all will go back to your hometown, you know, to back to your family, extended family. You know? uh, as we celebrate Chinese New Year, let God's glory shine through you. Let us shine that treasure in our clay of jar to our family members, to our friends, to our relatives, especially those who are yet to know Jesus Christ as their own personal saviour. Let the beauty in brokenness work in SSGC as we embark this year team. Can, can, can you still remember our team for this year? Anyone? Yeah, it's given there, right? Yeah, okay, right? What is that? Hearts open, hands on, right? As we embark to, you know, uh, push this team up, right? Let the beauty in our brokenness work for us. So in closing, I would like to invite the uh, 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 music team to come. Uh, we, we will sing a song, Waymaker, the one that we have sang just now. I thought that it is very appropriate. Uh, yeah, that is what God is about, you know. God will provide a way, yeah. Uh, God will move things around and God will make miracles. Um, that's what God promised. Yes. Yeah? Let's arise for this. I love the verse that says that we are perplexed but not crushed. Uh, and there are many, 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 many pressures in life. It's very tempting to uh, despair. So even as we sing this song again, uh, perhaps let, it, let the words minister to our heart so that we remember the hope that we carry around that is so precious and worth sharing that we are not, we do not allow the external things to crush us and lose sight of the preciousness that God has deposited in our hearts. We're gonna sing, You Are Here Healing Every Heart. And I would like us to receive His healing. Whatever it is that you feel pressure in, whether it's work, life, finances, ambition, know that the Lord has, has the ability to heal our hearts and soothe our souls from the many pressures that we have to face even tomorrow. I'm saying you are here touching every heart. and
God who is a promise keeper. No matter what brokenness you are in, no matter how crushed you are, may God allow it to happen. He's always near. Don't waste those experiences because it is those moments that God is going to build you up to be mature. And that's how refiner's fire come. So Lord, we thank you that even uh, moments when we feel that you are not around. God, we know that you have always been here. In fact, you died on the cross for us. And because of that, O oh Lord, we can take assurance that there's nothing that you don't understand. When we feel that you don't understand, actually it is we don't understand that you understand. Thank you, Lord. And we praise you and give you glory. Bless our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. Okay.
You may be seated. I'm going to just give you a very quick uh, uh, announcement. Next week is going to be one service. Remember when you come, can you dress your best? Can? It's going to be a special uh, a day. So dress your best and come. And uh, we're going to enjoy ourselves. Maybe there'll be some nice photography sessions going on. Yeah? Please come with it. Yeah, and then... Um, for those who have come and uh, invited the friends for the uh, Christmas service, I would encourage that uh, you continue to fall out with your friends and uh, we want to get to know them, bring them along. And uh, also for the uh, coming uh, pulpit series, we will be starting on Genesis. Very exciting. Okay, you think that uh, you only, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That's all you know. There is much more to it. Okay? And... Uh, Thank God for that. And then today, we have the Ladies' Connection at 3.30 p.m. in Ebenezer. So, open to all ladies. So, I'm not involved. Okay, you can go ahead and enjoy yourselves. Okay, and uh, for those who are even at home uh, and uh, here, if there's anything that you want to share with uh, any of us, the leaders, the elders, um, or you want to leave a message of, for us so that we can connect with you and pray with you, just look at the link and click below. And some of you here, you are shy, you can go online and uh, just click us and uh, we will uh, pray with you, pray for you, that God will bless you. So, have a blessed Chinese year. Gong si fa chai. Wan si rui. Okay, enjoy yourself. God bless you. Thank you, thank you everybody. This love is